the continuation fire of our bow drill fire from last night. We, uh, we're in a cave area here. It's not really a cave. It's more like a, a giant rocky outcropping. But this area is nice and dry. It's uh, totally protected in here. And uh, we set this fire going last night with a, with a bow drill. And then last night left a bunch of hardwoods on there uh, just smoldering away. The ash of your fire will protect your coals. They, they burn very slowly once they're covered with the white ash. So in the morning, we, we got up, we had our cup of coffee and everything, and uh, we were able to just restart this fire that we started yesterday. Now the idea is we're going to use this fire to create uh, materials, char cloth, that will help us make a fire much easier with the flint and steel method uh, in the future. If you're stuck in the bush long term, that's uh, definitely a product that you want to make once you get your first fire, your first difficult fire going with that bow drill then you just uh, set yourself up to make life easy. Uh, even if you don't have a flint and steel, if you have char cloth, it's an excellent coal extender. It just makes things function a lot better when you put a piece of, uh, of char cloth in a tinder bundle, you, you're guaranteed. The other thing you can do with uh, char cloth is once you get that ember going from your bow drill, you can take a piece of char cloth and light a second ember. So you've always got that second reserve ember. If you lose an ember in a tinder bundle and it doesn't burst into flames, you can just keep going and start over and, and keep uh, continue to work that way. So even if you don't have a flint and steel handy or have no way to make a flint and steel fire, making char cloth will make your bow drill uh, efforts much more successful. That's right. talk here about this these two projects bushcraft projects I've been working on this is a gourd I made myself I bought it I, I cut off like a half of it actually less than half of it almost like a lid and inspired by a video that I saw when Dave Canterbury would actually uh, waterproof the inner part of his gourd by melting wax well, I thought that was a good idea and decided to do the same here with my gourd. But uh, instead of a bee wax, I used carnauba wax. Carnauba is a plant that we got here in Brazil in the northeast of the country. And I was sent... Carnauba. Carnauba, that's right. Thank you, Mac. And I was given, I was sent two big chunks of it that I can use to waterproof, you know, leather or whatever materials I need and I find I found it would be a good idea an interesting idea to try it with uh, my gourd and it worked really fine I have a thick layer of uh, carnauba wax here which I'm going to which has been used to waterproof the, the my gourd and now I can collect water transport water store water here if I want and it will do a good job another project I've been working with is this big block of limestone which I collected from um, from my buddy's property. He's got a like a mine, a little cave in there. And what I dug a hole in here in this block, limestone block, which will hold about 800 milliliters of water, about almost like a liter of water, which is almost like a quart. Of, about a quart. Yeah, about a quart of water. Good enough for you to you know have a drink collect water, store water, you can, can hot boil the water with rocks and, and, and thus treat your water. Simply store water here. If you don't want store water, you can use it to grind grains, grind corn, make flour, whatever you're, you're processing, whatever kind of grains or food you're processing. And that, that, that should do a good job here. And these are the two projects I've been working on recently. And I'm glad I have completed these projects. Of course, I'm not going to carry and bring a heavy chunk of limestone all over the place to my bushcraft camps. This is something I will probably uh, probably leave in a place where I I go camping, and and I'll just leave it there at my permanent camp. This is not something I I want to be carrying around, you know, on my back. But anyway, this is a it was a fun project. Was interesting to do. And I'll, I'm glad I was able to accomplish it. You know, as I had to dig the whole uh, 
bow out of it. Just using a chisel and a uh, sledgehammer. But you know, it was a fun project, like I said, and I'll be willing to give it a give it a try at my permanent bush camp as soon as I get there. Just want to show you guys this uh, latest project I've, I, I I finished recently. This is um, a bag, a side bag, which I made using this natural material, this fur that was sent to me by Marcos de Lacqua, our student that finished uh, the advanced course. He went through all the, the layers of uh, training that our school offers uh, regarding survival. And during the, the last, you know, course he gave me this piece of a, of a sheepskin and it's really neat it's really cool and actually it, it is the first time that I ever had the chance to see a sheepskin and I liked it I'll show you what it is now well this is the bag which I made out of the sheepskin and you can see that I kept the original profile of the of the, the skin for the lid that covers the bag and on the on the outer part on the inner part of the lid you have the raw leather which is you know I wanted to keep that profile now the bag was made uh, by sewing the parts together with waxed thread and uh, inside the bag as you can see there there's a liner which is nothing but a piece of a cotton fabric that protects the leather the, the bag from inside and and thus it makes it have um, you know tougher and I can put heavier equipment here. I'm not gonna put a lot of heavy tools here though, but for the content for the material that I carry inside, it's good enough. It's resistant enough. The straps are nothing but cotton, like a cotton band, cotton strap that I use, a brown one, and I sold it to the tips too, to the corners too. And the content of my primitive uh, fire kit is basically like a fireboard which I used yesterday to make the fire two sockets well this one here is the one with the bearing inside which was carved out, out of a piece of a soapstone this one here was sent to me by Mar Marty from a southern survival and uh, the fireboard I used yesterday some pieces of fat wood in case it's rainy and wet which is not the case now so I don't really need any of this as as an alternative to fire to help me out you know keeping up uh, the flame there burning longer in this little piece uh, of bamboo container made out of bamboo which has a cork lid I store cattail I store pineata which is cotton like material all to help me with fire same story with the bag apart from the cotton and pineata that goes inside have some uh, pieces of uh, cotton material to char later I have the tobacco box which has a flint and steel inside more cotton like material ammunition box for charred material you know containers for char charred material the only known fire item that I carry inside is this folder the Savoid one but I, I think it's a good idea to have a knife inside and inside this other can I have my primitive mini torch uh, which I learned from Bushcraft USA. Actually, Mac learned from from the guys at Bushcraft USA, and it is a great idea. So I keep I keep Vaseline in this little container and a cotton cord here to help me make like a primitive um, torch, mini torch if I have to, like walking in a cave. So inside, like I said before, inside this uh, fur bag, this uh, sheepskin bag, I only have natural fire making materials primitive materials that I like to use and carry with me and tell you the truth I'm really glad with this gift that was sent to me by Marcus de Lacqua our good student and friend and again Marcus thank you so much for that nice gift you sent me down brother I'm, I hope you guys appreciate this bag that I made the side bag that I made and this is Juliano Toniolo from Brazil now see you in the boonies